Hi, Dr. Dave here to show you how to replace a Q-tip without any special tools required. All you need is some sandpaper, some super glue gel, some scotch magic tape, a small hand towel, a new tip, some paper from a copy machine or printer, a utility knife, and a block of wood. That's all that's required. You will also need lots of patience to take your time and be careful if you want to do a good job. The procedure consists of the 10 steps shown here. I will demonstrate and discuss each in detail. Throughout much of the procedure, the cue is supported on the towel and block like this. If you want a softer surface to protect the shaft when cutting off the tip, you can use a leather or cork pad, but a clean block of wood is fine. Carefully position the blade close to the ferrule, but make sure you leave a small amount of material behind. You don't want to risk cutting into or damaging the ferrule. Roll the shaft back and forth and use a sawing motion as you cut to make it a little easier. Now carefully trim off the remainder of the tip, taking your time to remove only a thin sliver at a time. Be sure to keep the blade as flush as possible with the ferrule. As you get close to the ferrule, the knife should mostly be scraping instead of cutting. Be sure to hold the knife and shaft in a way that you won't cut yourself. On the final scraping passes, you can have the knife perpendicular to the ferrule. To remove the remainder of the tip and glue residue, you can lightly sand the ferrule end by holding sandpaper with a centered finger while turning the shaft, being careful to not sand the outer shoulder of the ferrule. Use a paper towel or a clean rag to remove any remaining dust. When you are done, the ferrule end should look clean. Now sand the back of the new tip so it will more easily absorb glue and be flat. It is best to use a circular sanding motion like this, rotating the tip and shifting as you go. Wipe the sanded tip on a paper towel to remove any remaining dust. The new tip should have a larger diameter than the ferrule. Test the fit of the tip on the ferrule to make sure it is oversized and fits flat with no wobble while turning and sliding. Now tape around the ferrule to build up the diameter to the size of the new tip to make it easier to center the tip when gluing it on and to keep the glue off the ferrule. Make sure the tape does not protrude beyond the ferrule, but get it as close to the end as possible. Check that the tape is built up to the same diameter as the tip. Here's what the tape should look like when you are done. Now uniformly spread glue on the back of the tip and place a small drop in the center so the glue will squeeze out evenly without any bubbles or voids. Center the tip on the tape-wrapped ferrule with gentle turns and shifts. Gently press down on the tip to get the glue to squeeze out uniformly, being careful to keep the tip centered. Gently wipe off excess glue with a paper towel while turning the shaft. This also helps make sure the tip is centered. Now firmly apply and keep pressure on the tip. You can do this by hand by pushing the shaft down onto the table. You can also wedge the shaft under a table with the tip down on a board. Either way, make sure the pressure on the tip is uniform with the shaft vertical. Wait a minute or so for the glue to totally set. When you are done, the tip will be centered and bonded to the tape-wrapped ferrule. Now remove the tape by peeling toward the tip. When necessary, you can scrape with your fingernail or a utility knife to help separate the corners and edges of the tape. This is what it looks like when you're done, with the tip extending beyond the ferrule. Now trim away the glue residue and some of the excess tip material. Hold the blade flush against the ferrule at all times, and start with the blade angled like this, with the board and tip close to the edge of the table. Trim only a little at a time with a sawing motion, being careful to not apply too much force. Don't try to remove too much material. The tip should be beveled out some like this. The sanding steps to follow will remove the excess. The next step is to sand the tip down to the final diameter. First apply a layer of tape to the ferrule. Now put down a sheet of rough sandpaper and place the block over half. Then tape down two pieces of cover paper across the sandpaper. 
Now position the block so only a tip height width strip of sandpaper is exposed with the tip against the block. This is what it should look like up close with only the tip touching the sandpaper. The joint end of the shaft is supported on the towel to keep the shaft above the table and to help angle the tip into the sandpaper slightly. Holding the shaft near the ferrule and with the other hand on the block to keep everything in place, rub the tip back and forth to sand it down, turning the shaft frequently. Move to a different part of the sandpaper and blow and wipe the debris away periodically. After the tip gets close to the final diameter, switch to fine grain sandpaper and continue. You can also fold over the towel to allow an even closer final sand. Check the paper thickness periodically to make sure the surface is smooth and thick enough to prevent the ferrule from being scratched, especially when using the rough sandpaper. This is what the tip should look like when you are done, after removing the tape, with the tip diameter matching the ferrule diameter. You can check that it is smooth with your fingernail like this. You can fine sand the ferrule and tip to help smooth things out even more. This will also clean up the ferrule. Wrap fine sandpaper around the tip and ferrule, keeping it as flush as possible, and turn the shaft, applying light sanding pressure with your fingers. Then change to an even finer grit. Finish it off with ultra-fine sandpaper or emery paper. Now support the shaft on the unfolded towel and burnish the tip by wetting the sides and then rubbing on the paper, turning the shaft frequently. If you want an even shinier finish, buff the tip and ferrule on a piece of leather. When you are done, the tip will look professionally installed. All that remains is shaping and chalking the tip. You can use rough sandpaper curled in your hand while turning the shaft. But if you have a tip shaping tool, that is much easier. Regardless, it is good to smooth the surface a little with fine grit sandpaper when you are done, although it isn't necessary. Now thoroughly chalk the tip and it's ready for play. I want to thank Bob Jewett for coming up with many parts of this procedure and for giving me lots of good advice and guidance as I plan this video. Thanks, Bob! If you want a detailed list of all steps used in this video, along with additional advice, see the document linked in the video description. Also linked is a resource page containing more information and other useful videos. Hopefully, in the future, if you don't have convenient access to a fast turnaround cue mechanic when you need one, you will be able to change the tip by yourself. But be sure to practice on other cues first so you will be ready. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.